Hello everyone. Welcome to my sewing room. And I am going, I was just fixing to put together a memory pillow. Um, and I thought I would go, I would do a video on this. I have a lot of requests for these uh, memory pillows. They're really, really simple to make. Uh, the only thing, if you do the patch, you need an embroidery machine to do that. Or you could call me up and I'll make you one and sign it ever how you want to. Papa or Mama or Daddy or Dad or a person's name, whatever. But I've already sewn this on. Now, to prepare my shirt, I took it to the cutting table. And, of course, every shirt that comes in here, for the, whether it be for a quilt or for a pillow, they're always, 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 every button is unbuttoned. I have to button them all the way up. One time this lady brought me uh, 96 button-up shirts. She wanted four king size. And I had to button up 96 shirts. I don't know why they think they're doing me a favor by unbuttoning them for me. I don't know, but I have to button up every button. But the most important thing on these shirts is this is not, it's not uh, been ironed yet. But if you see this little pleat right here that gives a man a little extra room across his upper back I take my scissors and I cut well first I cut the sleeves off cut those off get those out of the way this shirt smells like an old man's house it smells like that kind of cooking smells Okay, I cut the arms off. Get this straightened out here. I cut the arms off, and then I go from the arm where the, where the hole is after I cut the arm off, and I cut right along this seam right here, making sure to get the top of that pleat. And then when I iron it, I iron that pleat really well, put some starch on it, iron it really well, flatten it out. Because if you do not get rid of that pleat, that pleat will be in the... Um, back of your pillow now when you do this you can do one of two things make sure when you get ready to cut your pillow out and just have to cut it out one time make sure when you cut out the size you need for your pillow that you are um, this is not like an inch or two inch or two shorter than your front part of your um, pillow so you know to keep down the confusion if you want to cut out the square on the front and then turn around and take a square out the back and if you do that you don't have to get rid of the plate you can just take your square down close to the hem and you don't have to get rid of this plate but that's the way I do it I take the plate out and I cut it out one piece both pieces at the same time all right I've got my pieces cut out I typically do these at 16 inches make these 16 inch pillows uh, but I couldn't find 16 inch pillow forms yesterday, so I'll have to order me some. And then we have, I have some, already sewn on the patch and got it nice and ironed. And then I'm going to lay my back piece on here. I'd like to have my seam that I'm going to put my pillow in at the bottom. And you, and another, another thing I learned um, is to leave your hole for your pillow, leave it a nice size. Don't, don't, I mean, you could get it in if your hole was only six inches, but it would be a lot easier. It's a struggle. Leave it at about eight or nine inches, and it's a lot easier to get your pillow in. And I'm just doing a one fourth inch seam. All the way around Working with clothes, you can see my edges on my backside here. There's the wrinkle where the pleat was. 
it's um, a little jagged. That's okay. I mean, you're working with clothes. You're not working with new fabrics. And it's just almost impossible to keep uh, anything you make out of clothes to keep them square. Okay, we're going down our fourth side. Now, I have cut these at 18 and a half inches um, for an 18 inch pillow form. And because that's only leaving a half an inch, which I am taking up a half inch seam, I like for them to fit snugly. I saw, I saw somebody the other day advertising memory pillows, and I wanted to comment. They are really you, you got them, they're too loose. They're really really loose on the pillow form. And but I'm not going to knock somebody else's stuff. Now I'm not going to trim the edges on this because. It's already it's worn fabric, and to keep the uh, strength of the fabric, I'm not going to trim this. I'm just going to turn it right side out. And as you can see, I'm going to measure my the hole that I left here, just so you can see how big I leave it. I leave all my contact information down below in the description box. So if you would like for me to make you a patch for your memory pillow, I even can do, uh, this is the overalls I used to wear. This is the gown I used to wear. This is the, you know, I, I, ch I can change that from shirt to something else. All right, I have left my hole at 13 inches. That's good. It's and also that tag that says do not cut by penalty of law, I cut that off. Because if you don't, it leaves a crink it leaves a crinkling sound spike. Because it's a big tag. And it leaves a crinkling sound in my pillow and I don't like that. So maybe it just means I don't know. I I, don't, I never have understand that about mattresses and pillows. Do not cut this off by penalty of law. You know, is there a mattress police a pillow police out there? I don't know. But I cut it off. And that looks like it's going to fit just perfect. And just make sure everything looks good and straight. And see how it's nicely filled out? There's no, no slack or anything in it. It's just nicely filled out, like it was, like it was, like there was somebody in there. Now to take the bottom, and we're going to pinch it, just like so, just like this. Don't leave it too shallow. Make sure it's plenty deep, so that. Also, I was going to tell you, if your hole is too small when you put your pill in there, it will stretch your shirt fabric, and then it, this won't close up nice and neat. So. Just make sure your hole is big enough that the pillow goes in real, you know, really easy. And we're going to put it under our needle. And I got it under my arm. Holding it down, smooshing it down. And a little at a time, this machine has got a super grip on it. The foot does, so I can leave it while I readjust. Turn all this under. Also, I forgot to tell you, <coughs> I sew down my the front of my shirt. I leave the buttons on, and I just take the machine, and I just talk. You can't even tell where I did that. Um, my seam is right here. Now, if this was a red shirt, solid red shirt, I would go with red thread if it was, you know. But now, on the shirt that I showed you that's not been cut yet, I would still use white thread on it. But um, there it is. Memory pillow, easy peasy, easy done. And uh, got a little pocket that you can put a little message in or something like that if you want to. Um, kids love to get these out of their granddaddy's shirt, especially if it's a shirt that their granddaddy wore a lot. You know, and I've made them out of mama's house coats, and I've made them out of grandma's gowns, and I've made them out of. Um, jerseys and just all different things 
but it's a really 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 easy to make a memory pillow the only thing is you know to have the equipment this design I actually got this design where it's written out this is the shirt I got it off of Etsy and I just added the love paw paw on the bottom but you can if you've got an embroidery machine that you can actually type this out yourself make this out yourself or if you've got so what pro you can make this out yourself to read whatever you want to but um I did buy this design and it's bigger than what I used to do. I used to do a lot smaller patch, but I like the big patch. So, and that was, I bought that design for probably two dollars. I'll use it a thousand times. Well, there you have it. A memory pillow, easy to do, not much to it, and I got one more to make. Thank you all so very much. Hit the um, subscribe button, the little bell for notifications, and comment if you have a question. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.